Well, welcome back to another pot questing video, and we have the fifth book in the Broken Code Warriors season. Hello, fellow pot questers, it is I, Aaron the Pot Quester, and today I bring you The Place of No Stars, The Broken Code Warriors by Aaron Hunter. And well, let's get right on to it. In the last book of The Broken Code, Ashfur has dragged Squirrel Flight down into the moon pool and seemingly disappeared. And in this book, we continue on straight from that. Squirrel Flight and Ashfur e ends up in the Place of No Stars, or the Dark Forest. There, Ashfur seems to be able to control spirits and pretty much manipulate every single one of the Dark Forest cats. Which is not good considering they are quite of a quite evil peep, evil cats, and he has complete control over them. And he also seems to have control over all of the spirits that has died after Star Clan's connection was cut. Which is honestly just not good stuff. And Shadow Sight is accused of letting Ashfur go, when in fact he had found out that Ashfur had all of the different spirits trapped within Bramble Star's body. And if you killed Bramblestar's body, or what the body that Ashford was inhabiting, all of the spirits within him would die. So that is really not good. So Shadow Sight was accused. However, after a, a series of events, he managed to blot aside his accusement, and the Root Spring tells the clans that well, he had seen that Ashford dragged Squirrel Flight into the moon pole. This is just not really good, is it? And so Shadow Sight immediately knows he has to go to the Dark Forest. However, everyone else just rejects them and they send Willow Shine instead. However, Willow Shine is captured by Ashfur once again, and she is she becomes one of the spirits that Ashfur controls. And Willow Shine dies. And due to this, Shadow Sight at night, secretly, alongside with Mothwing, dives into the Dark Forest. Um, there, there, she finds that Ashford, well, has an island in the Dark Forest, where he has all of the cats that he controlled, and he is there alongside with Squirrel Flight. And he can control any one of the spirits. Which is, honestly, just a great situation to be in. And Root Spring is also dragged in by Willowshine. And together they they are thinking of first off Shadow Sight is trying to save Bramble Star and so is so is Root Spring. And together they're going in. And Shadow Sight, he when he sees that Ashfur is controlling Bramble Star Spirit to attack Squirrel Flight, he When, when he sees that Ashfur is attacking Squirrel Flight, he attacks Ashfur, disrupting his con concentration long enough for Squirrel Flight and Bramble Star to run away. Then, then he has a brief fight with Ashfur, which he is no match for because he's a medicine cat, he isn't a warrior, guys. And he's lopped into the lake and he wakes up in the clan, so he's back. Meanwhile, Root Spring is conspiring with another Dark Forest cat who, is, who decides to join up with them. And they find that Squirrel Flight has been captured. I mean, Squirrel Flight hasn't been captured. However, Bramblestar's actual body is in on the island where Ashfur is. So they ask Snowtuff, who is the Dark Forest cat that is helping them. He basically becomes the prey and he says, Ashfur, I found Bramblestar spirit within the dark forest so come with me and he and he managed to lure Lashfur out long enough for bramble star to hop in the body and roots bring bramble star and our dear squirrel flight to get out together and as root spring as squirrel flight and bramble star gets out and root spring is too about to get out a body slams into him and he isn't able to join them outside in the world Meanwhile, meanwhile, um, Squirrel Flight and Brown Monster has returned finally to the real world. However, they find that Root Spring isn't here. 
to Shadow Sight and Bristle Frost, a Thunder Clan cat who is in love with Root Spring, together they hop in to the Dark Forest once again. And there they see Root Spring fighting an impossible battle against several Dark Forest cats being controlled by Asher. And there it ends. Now, okay, so I'll be talking about some of the themes in this story, and it's honestly the usual Warriors theme. Do you follow your heart, or do you follow the rules? So, obviously there's like this conf conflict within Bristlefrost that Aaron Hunter did a lot throughout the seasons of Warriors, and basically it's like, Bristlefrost Frost loves Rootspring, and Rootspring is a Sky Clan cat. Which also leads to say that they can't be mates, they can't love each other. However, Bristle Frost loves them, and he, she doesn't know, she starts to doubt whether being in her clan and following the rules is worth it. After all, she truly did love Rootspring. So, in this case, do you follow your heart or do you follow the rules? I mean, what, what are these rules anyway? Are they really worth it? I mean... Of course, each rule in the Warrior Code has a reason for being set. For example, the rule about no mating outside of clans, well that didn't used to be a rule. However, when that when there was like this huge battle between two clans, there was a huge war because of a kit between two cats who were in love with each other in different clans. So it was this there was this huge bloody battle. And because of this, they made the rule so that such a war would never occur again. No half clan cats whatsoever. And of course, these rules were broken like a lot. However, well, they're, they're the code. However, are they really worth it? Do we really have to be split into five clans and fight each other? I mean, the clans can just sort of live, right? I mean, they can just be there, five clans, and they each have their different leaders and their different customs and their different ways of hunting. However, they could still all be one group known as the Warriors or something like that. They don't have to always be constantly fighting alongside with each other on the borders. They don't have to be fighting each other. They're cats. They should be defending themselves from badgers and foxes and other threats rather than fighting each other, which is just, I don't know why they would do that. It's just dumb. And, I mean, rules are only worth it when good comes off them. However, I feel like a lot of the time it just causes a lot of unnecessary pain within the Warriors series. And perhaps I might suggest that that rule, well, pretty much sucks. And I, I just feel like the five clans, they should just live peacefully together. They don't need to fight each other. I don't know why they need to. I mean, of course, it'll be boring if they didn't fight each other and all that in the series. However, I, I can sense that the Broken Code is probably going to be the end for the Warrior Saga. So, I'm thinking maybe at the end, the five clans sort of become one. Not like they live together or anything, but they each live in their own area. However, they are one clan, just dispersed into different places. Like, for example, people who live in Seoul and people who live in Busan, they're still all Koreans. But they live in different places and they live differently. To, due to the different customs of the area. I feel like the clans could be like that instead of, you know, fighting each other over border battles. I mean, don't need to. Anyways, that is my opinion on the book. The plot was extremely, extremely tense and the pacing was so good and I was just, I just ripped through it like usual. I was so captivi captivated by it. I would highly recommend for all of you who's watching to read this book, and the Warrior Saga for that matter. A Vision of Shadows is a bit boring, however, The Broken Coat has not disappointed me so far. And well, like always, your plot quester, Aaron the Plot Quester. Great book, guys, and think about it. Are rules worth it if they make people sad or suffer? Are they?